Hey guys, on today's episode, I'm going to talk about when is the right time to pick grapes for making wine. And this is an extremely important topic. You can really do everything right in the vineyard, but if you choose the wrong time to pick those grapes, say uh, you're going out of town and you want to make sure you get them picked, or vice versa, maybe you wait a little bit too long to pick them, you can really like ruin your chances of making a good wine. So I'll try to go through some of the most important things when you are trying to pick. And at the end of the day, it's really a balancing act. Um, what you're trying to do is make this, achieve this balance of sugar, um, acid, tannin, and just general overall flavor ripeness. So a good grower will do everything they can to monitor these things and try to nail them. But at the same time, you're sort of at the mercy of the climate. So you're just trying to hit this point where you think those grapes are at the best point they possibly are going to be during that growing cycle and any longer time on that vine is going to be a bad thing for those grapes. So the, the things you might want to bring with you if you're walking around in the vineyard checking your grapes are first of all a refractometer. So what a refractometer does is it measures the sugar content in a sample of juice and it does it by bending light. And the beauty of a refractometer versus something like a hydrometer is it only needs a drop or two of grape juice to get a reading. And that's really important because you don't want to have to crush all kinds of grapes, especially if you have a small vineyard, um, just to get a quick reading and have to do this like every couple days. So this is a pretty inexpensive refractometer. And it's a, I believe it's a zero to 30 bricks scale which is a good place to be. You can get more fine graduations, but it works pretty good for me. And I'll put a link to the one that I have um, in the description of the video if you wanna buy that one yourself. The other thing you're gonna to wanna to monitor is the pH of those grapes. So usually as the sugars are rising in that grape, the acids are dropping. Uh, and you kinda of wanna know where you're at with that. So you're gonna want a pH meter and um, things to look for in a pH meter for the vineyard is you want one where you don't need a very large sample of juice. This one has a really small cup on the bottom. You want uh, three point calibration if possible. You want accuracy to two decimal points. Uh, it's nice to have a replaceable probe. Those are just some, some things you might want to think about. I'll put Again, I'll put a link to the pH meter that I like to use in the description. And... I'll kind of jump into what you really are looking for. So it's it's right now it's August and I'm in Pennsylvania. So in Pennsylvania in August, you'll start to see the red grapes changing colors. You'll it's called um veraison. So this is at the point when grapes are green or red wine grapes are green and then at some point they start to develop color. So don't get too excited. You still have a little bit of a ways before you really want to pick those grapes. But it's time to kind of start watching them a little bit harder. Um, think about things like exposing those berries to sun to make sure they get the amount of, the amount of light to really help build sugars. Um, but, but it'll be still really weeks um, or even you know a month and a half or two before it's really time to um, pick those grapes. But first things first, know the variety that you're growing. So for instance, if you're growing um, Cabernet Sauvignon, there's kind of some targets for that grape. You might want to have a pH, an ending pH when you're finished making that wine of 3.6 to 3.7. Um, you probably also want to hit in and an alcohol of about uh, 13 to 14 and a half, somewhere in that ballpark. So. These are good things to know for the variety because these are decisions that on the vine, the time you pick will affect those decisions. Um, other things you're going to want to know are just some very basics. So certain things as a grape ripens, uh, the, the stems will start to turn brown, the seeds will start to turn brown. And this is a good thing. So if you were to pick a grape that has um, green seeds, or stems where they're just completely green. You're always gonna have a little bit of green on the stems. A lot of times what you'll have is a lot harsher tannin. Um, you'll have oftentimes a lot of like bell, pe bell pepper flavor. 
which isn't the end of the world, but it can be a detractor if it's too high of a level. So things to watch are things like that. And the other thing you're going to want to watch is just the, the color of that berry. Um, it's gonna, you're going to want to make sure it's a deep kind of purple. But again, um, depending on the variety, maybe it won't get purple. So I guess I shouldn't jump too far there. But uh, again, we'll go back to, so you want to know your variety. So let's pick a variety, for instance. So let's pick um, Cabernet. Well, why don't we pick Merlot? So a Merlot is a, the kind of wine that you might want to be at a finished pH of, say, 3.55 to 3.6. Um, so in the field, when it comes time to pick it, you actually don't want to be at that number. During fermentation, the pH will rise about, say, 0.13 to 0.15. And if you allow that wine to go through malolactic fermentation, the same thing's going to happen. Say about um, 0.1 to 0.13 of a pH rise. So you're really going to want to pick those grapes about 0.25 of a pH before the actual um, pH that you're going to want to finish at. So for something like a Merlot, say you want to target a pH of um, 3.6, you're going to probably want to pick those grapes at a pH of around 3.35 to 3.4. But this is only one piece of the equation. So on something like a Merlot, you're probably going on a target an alcohol of about 13.5%. Um, so to hit that number, um, you're going to want to hit a sugar percent of about 25% mm, sugar. So that would be 25 bricks on your refractometer. Um, one kind of rough measurement of to know what bricks to equal what um, alcohol percentage is, if you take the bricks reading and multiply it by 0.55 or some people will say 0.57 that'll give you a pretty good idea of what the finished alcohol of that wine will be so you could do the same thing in backwards and you could take whatever you want the alcohol to be divided by 0.55 or divided by 0.57 to get an idea of where you want to target that wine you might want to uh, talk to some local growers just to see what's even realistic in your area because i know if you go somewhere like the um the cooler areas like the finger lakes to hit a a sugar content of 26 percent is really just not going to happen and if you try to all you're going to do is oxidize those grapes on the vine by leaving them hang way too long so talk to some growers in your area just to kind of figure out what exactly is realistic um some other things, uh, some people will say you want to taste the grapes, and you do want to taste the grapes, but taste alone, you better be a pretty good grape tasting expert to really know, because when those grapes hit 22, 23% sugar, they taste so good, even if they are going to make bad wine. So sure, taste the grapes. Um, something that a lot of people will also do is um, chew on the seeds. So check that the seeds are not green. Again, green seeds usually make really harsh tannins. So a mature brown seed, when you chew on it, it should crunch. You should be able to chew it. Um, it should kind of crumble in your teeth. So if you have good mature seeds, that's a good sign. Um, again, just visual inspection. Um, if you were to pick too early, usually the problem that you would have is way too high of acids and um, way too low of sugar and you just end up making a really tart wine you might not even be able to finish the fermentation if the acids are way too high um, if you were to wait too long to pick say you're just really you think you can hit that 25 26 bricks but you're in new york state you might um, end up with um, a situation where maybe you have a freeze that occurs um, you might also have a situation where by hanging those grapes too long in some climates, you could actually get oxidation on the vine. Um, so that's really a bad thing. So even though you're trying to hit these target numbers, what you're really trying to do is hit the best um, balance of 
you know, optimal numbers for that grape variety that you can do in your climate and, and learn from it. So uh, if this year you, you just couldn't make something happen, read about growing or um, watch this channel as I start to make more growing type videos. And there are some tricks you can do to kind of encourage um, more sugar in those grapes as the season goes on or encourage um, the grapes to just ripen a little bit more to get those brown seeds a little bit quicker. Um, something I didn't mention is on a white grape, you'll even still have a little bit of a color change on a white grape too. So that's, it, it could be from a bright green to more of like a yellow green. So that's something you're going to watch on a white um, grape. Uh, overall though, it's, it's kind of a learning thing, but all I really want to mention is just don't get too excited and just run out there and just blindly pick your grapes and just start um, making wine out of them. What I will do on my website, smartwinemaking.com, is I will um, create a post of just a list of target points where you might want to be as far as pH to start a wine and also as, as far as bricks. Um, maybe I'll also put um, pH to finish the wine. And this will be a nice little reference. I know it helps me a lot because you're making a lot of different wines and it's kind of nice to know a target, but at the end of the day too, you just do what you can. If you're growing in your own backyard, um, you want to get that, that grape as best as possible, but um, it might not exactly be the same as the Stag Leaps Cabernet Sauvignon. It might be your own version of it and it might express your region more than it expresses like a California region. So I hope, I know I kind of bounced all over the place in this topic, but it's just such a complicated topic, but also so important. So I hope um, you can um, at least learn some of the things to do to decide when to pick. And I hope it at least sparks a conversation. If you have any questions, make sure you post them in the comments section in between myself and maybe some of the other followers. It can spark an intriguing just conversation about when is the right time to pick and little tricks that you can know to um, to do better in the field and make better wine that way. Um, again, make sure you click the little subscribe button if you want to get more videos like this. I'll start trying to make more videos about the vineyard uh, maybe in the next year. And also, if you're interested in winemaking, make sure you check out my website, smartwinemaking.com and um, follow my mailing list there if you, uh, you want to get notifications. Uh, thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching.